However, you don't always need to type. There is a much easier way to achieve all this. Hi, I am Alex Jordan from Learn Color Grading and FilmSimplified.com. For many filmmakers, expressions in Fusion seems like a mystery. Today, I promise you, you will learn what uh, expressions are, uh, what are they used for, and you will learn to write very basic expressions. Let's start. In order to understand expressions, we first need to answer a very simple question. What problem do they solve? So, why do we have expressions in the first place? Well, they solve many problems, but the simplest two problems they solve is first, the problem of uh, parameters in fusion not being connected. For example, let's take a look at the width and height parameters in a rectangle mask node. The problem is, if for example, I move the width controller, the height controller's value does not change when I change the width. Usually, if you're in uh, the edit page, for example, in Resolve, you can link the width and height parameters in many effects. But in Fusion, it seems like there is no way to connect them. There is no button here that allows us to connect these two parameters. So expressions here will help us to achieve that. For example, linking these two parameters. And there's even more. What if I wanted to link the width parameter to the corner radius parameter, so that when I change the width, the corner radius will change with it. Expressions in Fusion allows us to achieve this. Next, there is the problem of effects not being easily automated. For example, let's take a look at this background node. This is the red controller. What if I wanted the value of red to change randomly, so that when I hit play, the value will just keep on changing? Again, uh, expressions will help us to tell the uh, slider to move randomly whenever we hit play. So just like uh, color management, you can think of expressions as helpers. So a helper will change a particular controller whenever he sees you moving a different controller. And another helper will move a particular slider randomly whenever you hit play. It's as simple as that. So let's start working with expressions. Let's first start with uh, adding an expression. It's very simple. Simply right click on the parameter that you want to automate and select expression. This box that appears below the controller is the expressions controller. Notice that there is a plus sign to the left of the box. We'll learn what it's for in a bit, but for now, just notice that it's there. Now, before we move any further, we need to learn about properties. This is the node we're currently working on. You can see its name here. Each controller is a parameter, so the border width is a parameter, level is a parameter, and the angle is a parameter. Every single parameter has an address. You can simply find the address of any parameter by simply hovering the mouse on top of the parameter and looking at the bottom left in Fusion. So for example, let's hover the mouse over the width property. And if you look at the bottom left, you can see the address of this parameter. First, we have the name of the node, so you can see rectangle two. Then there is a dot followed by the name of the property, width. This will come in handy later, but just keep that in mind now. Speaking of Resolve, if you're a beginner and you're interested in learning how to use Resolve, you'll love our free crash course that will teach you the basics of every tab in Resolve. Simply go to filmsimplified.com and sign up for free. So let's now take a look at the first kind of expressions, the expressions to link different properties. Let's first start by linking properties in the same node. For example, in order to tell the height property to follow the value of the width property, I'll right click on the height property, add an expression, and here in the expression, all I need to do is to simply type width. And now, notice that when I change the value of width, height changes with it. It's as simple as that. We simply told the height property to use the value and the width property. So now the height property will not use the slider anymore to determine the value. So if I try to move the slider, notice that I can't. Instead, the height property will determine the value to be added here by looking at the expression. And what did the expression tell it? Simply look at width. So whatever the value of width is, will become the value of height. So notice that both numbers are always the same value. So what if I needed to tell the uh, width property to always be exactly half the value of width? 
All I need to do here is to tell the height property not to use the width value, but to divide it by two. In order to do that, it's pretty simple. I'll simply start typing and I will tell it to divide the value by two. And now notice that if the value of width is one, height is 0.5. And if width value is 0.5, height is 0.25. So now the height property determines its value by looking at the expression, which simply tells it to get the value of width and divide it by two. Again, it's really that simple. You can multiply it by two, you can divide it by 20, whatever you want. However, notice a very important thing. Capitalization is very important. Note that the letter W is capital when it's written in the name of the value. So if, for example, I write width with a lowercase w in the beginning, the expression will not work. Notice that the height just became zero because Fusion does not know where to look for. I'm oh, sorry, I even mistyped width, but if I type it correctly with a w still, it wouldn't work. So capitalization is very important for this to work. So if you look at uh, the address of a particular node, and uh, the name of the node is capitalized and certain properties are capitalized, make sure to type the names of the properties the way they are. However, you don't always need to type. There is a much easier way to achieve all this. Remember the plus sign? I can simply click on it to draw a line between this property and any other property. So for example, I'll link height to the corner radius property this time. So I'm just hovering the mouse on top of the corner radius property name. And whenever I let the mouse go, notice that the correct value was loaded into the box. And now whenever I change the corner radius, the height changes with it. Notice how we're getting larger corner radius. And now whenever the height is lower, we're getting lower values for the corner radius. This is much easier than typing properties names. But what if I needed to link two properties that are in two different nodes? It's very simple. Just add the full address of the property, including the name of the node. So let's start by getting the address from a different node. So currently height is linked to corner radius in the same node. I know it's the same node because there is no node name before the name of the property. So let's link it to corner radius, however, this time in rectangle one, so another node. So first, let's get the full address of the property that we want to link to. So I'll click on this node, rectangle one, to load it. So this is the property that will become the master. And then let's check the full address on the bottom left of the monitor. So I'll hover over the corner radius here and notice that it simply has rectangle one before the name of the property. So I'll switch back to my original node and here in corner radius, I'll type rectangle one, then dot. Make sure to add the dot. Enter. And now I'll switch to the other node, change the corner radius and notice that the height of the rectangle to the right, rectangle two, is dependent on the corner radius of another node. So rectangle one. So we simply told a particular property in a particular node to get its value from a different property in another node. We can also achieve the same result without typing by simply again using the plus sign. In order to do that, we have to learn how to open the properties of two different nodes at the same time. It's very easy. Note that if I select multiple nodes in the inspector, I can see the properties of both nodes one at a time. So if I click here, I just open the properties for this node. And if I click on this node, now these are the properties for this one. So one of them is always collapsed. This allows us to use the plus sign to connect properties across different nodes. So let's get back to this node, rectangle one. Now I can simply drag a line from the height controller in this node and hover the mouse over the name of the other node. This will open its properties. And now I can simply drag the mouse on top of the property that I want to use as a master. And notice that now we just connected the height property to the width property in another node. So let's check the results. Notice again that the width property here controls the height property. Let's take a look at another use of expressions, randomizing values. For example, as discussed earlier, I have this background node and this is the red color controller. And I want the value of red to change randomly when I press play. Again, in order to do that, we need to add an expression. So I'll right click next to red and click on expression. Now we need to add a formula in the uh, expression box that will randomize the value. Where would we get this formula from? Well, you don't need to be a genius to write this formula. 
it's actually readily available. There are many resources available, including the official uh, Fusion uh, manual uh, that shows you how to work with impressions and shows you all the formulas you need to work with Fusion expressions. Um, I will show you uh, some of these resources at the end of the video, but now let's simply start with the easiest formula, the random formula. From the documentation, I know that the formula is the word random, open bracket, minimum value, comma, then max value. I did not try this formula, I just got this from the uh, documentation. So random here is simply the name of the formula. This simply tells Fusion that we will be randomizing some values now. Next we have minimum. This is the lowest number Fusion should use when generating random values. And as you guessed max, this represents the highest number Fusion should use when generating random values. So the question here is where to get the minimum and maximum values from. I'll right click to remove the expression so that I can control this slider freely. And now let's move the slider manually. Observe the color of the node here when I move the slider. Let's say that we do not want red to go lower than the current color. So now, if you look at the value of red, is 0.386. And now, let's move the slider again. And let's say that we do not want red to get brighter than this color. Again, if you look at the value of red now, it's 0.701. So now, we simply have the minimum and maximum values. Let's plug the values in. I'll right click, add an expression, add the formula. So, random, pin brackets, minimum, comma maximum and now i'll simply replace min and max with the actual values so the value for minimum was 0.386 and the value for maximum was 0.701 and now let's check the results however before i do that just keep in mind that this red color will start flashing on the screen so if you have any trouble with colors that flash on the screen just make sure not to look at this moment so i'll press play and notice the results we're getting random values for red well expressions can get a bit more tricky but uh, for beginners at least now you know what expressions are what are they used for and how to write some basic expressions this is a website that i use all the time by william justice and he has a cheat sheet for expressions in fusion you can find a lot of expressions here to start working with and just as we learned you simply need to understand what the expression does copy the expression and replace the values with your own numbers for example this is the random formula we just used you can see here random minimum and maximum again keep in mind it's very important to follow capitalization so one of the biggest problems that i see a lot of beginners do is to type random with a capital R. Just keep in mind to follow what's written exactly. And this is another website by Noah Hanel. I'm sorry if I cannot pronounce the name correctly, but uh, this is another great guide where you can find a lot of information about expressions with a lot of examples. I will leave the link to both resources in the description. So this was a simple and fast uh, crash course about expressions. Uh, I hope this was helpful. If it was helpful, please visit us at filmsimplified.com where you can join our free DaVinci Resolve Crash Course that is designed for the absolute beginner and will take you through every tab in Resolve. Thank you. Filmsimplified.com